Hello and welcome back to Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. When we last left off, um, well, I did go run to uh, Shrouded Hills doing a little bit of shopping, but uh, yeah, for, for the first part, um, Jaina, we are actually... Um, like you to do something for me. Um, what do you need me to do? I think it's best if you leave the group. Oh, well, I'm sure I'll find something to do around here. Goodbye. I'll be off then. Yeah, so, um, we might pick Jaina back up later, but I'm not sure. But next thing we need to do is uh, here in the Sobbing Onion, we are going to go underneath this trap door. Uh-oh. No bandit, half-orc bandit. Oh, that's Virgil. Oh, could you stop that, Chaka? We're gonna use the reanimator on Virgil. Greetings, my friend. It seems, well, it seems we both have come a long way. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me back. Virgil seems changed. There's a strange look in his eyes, one of peace, but also one of emptiness. He regards you calmly. Virgil, what happened here? These men, they were the men who killed my brother, Lawrence. I had come here tonight to confront my past once and for all. I knew that it would most certainly lead to my own death, but I just couldn't run from it any longer. Can you tell me the story, Virgil? Yes. It no longer holds any power over me. Before I met you, before I met Joaquin, I was very different. I was a criminal, really. An evil man. There's no other way to say it, and I don't mind admitting it to you now. I lived my life like a dead man. Well, at least in the sense that I used to view such things. I cared very little for anything at all. I lived only from moment to moment. No sense of right or wrong. I stole or lied or even killed with no thought for morality or consequence. And the men I associated with were the same way. Such lives feed upon themselves. Okay. My family moved to Caledon when I was younger. Lawrence and I were close in our early years. But the life I chose to lead as I grew older was repulsive to him. We finally had a falling out. At the time, I didn't care. The dead have no family and remember not their pasts. Uh -huh. This place is a place for the walking dead. A place where men gather to feed their darker sides. I knew it well. Too well. I spent a lot of time here. Time and money. I also gambled with men who make a living doing so. And one night... I lost more money than I had. Oh my. I was threatened physically when I couldn't pay. What is pain to dead men? I laughed and bled and spat on them. It was only then that they threatened to kill my brother if I didn't pay. Of course, I thought it was only a threat. And really, in the end, I didn't feel anything about the matter. I'd left all that behind me. Or at least that's what I thought. Oh no. I can't tell you the pain which tore open my very soul when I found Lawrence. Bleeding and broken. The life gone out of him. I cursed myself and the gods and everything else I had forsaken. And I ran. I ran so far and so fast that I don't remember anything until I woke up on the doorstep of the Panari Temple. 
where Joaquin took me in. Uh -huh. Yes. And doesn't that seem like so very long ago, Virgil? What? Who are you? I am Elder Joaquin. Oh, Joaquin. Yes, it is I. I must apologize. I have been so busy trying to find out who is trying to kill you and why, that I neglected to consider the fact that you might need my help in other matters. But you are alive, and so I rejoice. Somewhat. How do you know where to find us? I heard that Virgil was back in Caledon, alone. I feared the worst, as I knew a little more about his past than you did. I've been searching for him for the past week, and only now did I find him. You've changed much, young Virgil. Mm -hmm. Yes, Joaquim. And I have seen much, but I still remember the lessons you taught me. They have brought me through all of this, even through death itself. I knew from the moment I saw you that you were special somehow. That you were meant for more than the life you left behind. And I see that I was right. The Living One could not have chosen a better companion. You will be a powerful ally in the battle to come. And what have you been doing, Joaquin? Well, since I left Stillwater, I've been trying to find out if the prophecies say any more about what it is you're supposed to be doing. Unless I've missed something, Aronax hasn't yet returned. What have you found out? Well... Ah, that is quite a tale. You've done very well, and I think your journey is approaching the end. I hope so. Are you coming with us, Joaquin? No. I think that you are in capable hands. I am no longer needed here, but I'm sure I can find something to keep me busy. Good luck. May the spirit of Nasruddin be with you and guide your path. Farewell. Farewell to you. Virgil, you were saying? I was just saying that I came here tonight to face my past and to avenge my brother whom I betrayed. These men were the men who killed him. I knew that I wouldn't survive, but the weight of his death and my cowardice were too much to bear any longer. And here you found me. I'm glad you're back. Will you join us again? But I do have a few questions about it. Yes, of course. Tell me, Virgil, was it worth it? Do you feel that weight any less? Yes, I... Well, I saw Lawrence, you see. I saw him on the other side. He didn't really speak, but I felt that he was at peace. That he held no ill will towards me. That lessened my guilt. Allowed me to see that those choices I'd made were made by someone else. Another man. And that I had left that man behind. The other side? Tell me about death, Virgil. What was it like? It was... well... peaceful, I suppose. I remember very little. I have memories of a gray place, warm, silent. There was no pain there, no suffering. And I remember feeling that it was boundless. A place that was no place, not a prison nor a punishment, but freedom without end. You sound as if you enjoyed it somehow. I did, in a strange way. You've no idea what it's like to let go of everything that constitutes our struggles in this life. Pain, greed, envy, guilt. It's liberating. Even in its emptiness, I can honestly say that I wanted to come back, to finish what I'd began with you, that a small part of me wanted very badly to stay. And I think that I carry that great place with me always, a small piece of death. A few more questions. Yes, of course. Uh, you should have told me. I would have helped you. I know you would have. But this was a journey that I had to make myself. <laughs> This all sounds so bloody serious, doesn't it? This wise and introspective gibberish doesn't fit me very well. I'll do my best to put a cap on it. But it has changed me for the better. And I thank you once again. A few more yes, questions. of course. I'm glad you're back. Will you join us again? Yes, of course I will journey with you. As your protector and as your friend. As if I've got a bloody choice. Aren't we all just pawns of prophecy? Hmm. And something else. Not sure, but I think that something has happened to me as a result of all this. I may be better equipped to face Aranax when the time comes. I'm glad, Virgil. Shall we? Yes. Let us continue on. All right. What is it that you want of me? 
so Virgil's 29, level 29, really good. Uh, that must have been from the uh, multiverse update, because usually he comes back uh, at like level um, 25. Ooh, you've got a repeater rifle. Nice. Blitz and a fancy pistol. You got nothing. You got a hammer. Might be able to sell that. Scroll of Resurrect in case uh, you need to bring uh, Virgil back to life. Okay, so. These are uh, Shadowing Robes, Gleam's Helmet, uh, actually, one of you should have Light Fingered Gauntlet. But I'll pass some stuff over to you for now. a bit much for you. Those are technological. Oh. Actually, while we're here, let me grab that charged accelerator gun. High velocity pistol. Speed is power. Nothing is better than this incredible high velocity pistol. Combination of accelerator gun and fancy pistol, this marvelous little firearm accelerates its ammunition to unbelievable speeds, doing considerable more damage upon impact. Ever before has so much power come in such a small package. And if I want to make another charged accelerator gun, easy enough. And I could also make another mechanized gun. Long range pistol and magnesium? Not a bad idea. 5 to 12. Eh, good to just have on my person. But yes, that should be um, most of Virgil's plotline finished. Like, that's his main plotline. And 
yep, not much has changed from you, but... Hmm. God, I wish you would uh, learn more spells. Still a master of dodge and melee, which is not bad. And heal. And you've unlocked your ability to pick locks, because we've now learned you were a uh, thief earlier. But, since we've completed all of that, off to uh, the Panari Temple. Did I miss it? Yes, yes I did. You. you finally come, the Blimpcrest survivor. Saw your picture in the Tarantian. I am Alexander, first alkalite of the temple. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Wh what are you talking about? Do you have any idea what that means? It's you! You're the living one! It's a miracle! Let's not blow this out of proportion. Out of proportion? This is an astronomical event! The return of Nazdarin! The final battle! The end of it is all we know, and a new beginning! This is most amazing! Fine, I'm the living one. Do as I say and shut up. Of course, of course. <sighs> Forgive my excitement, exalted one. We have waited for you for a long time. Let's uh, keep this between us. Of course, you must listen to me. We were warned about the high priest to expect your arrival, and he has told us to scorn you as an imposter. For some reason, he refuses to believe. I can understand his position. The whole thing is a bit odd. There are times when all of us find it difficult to follow the path chosen for us. In the end, does it really matter if you were or you weren't? You seem intent on discovering what happened, and already you and Aranox have crossed paths. How do you know that? If you thwart his plan, you will have played a, the role of the Living One. Is there any difference in that? I suppose not. I just wish people would stop trying to kill me. I'm not worried. You've come this far, regardless of what you think. The... I feel the fate has chosen a worthy champion. Now, how can I be of service? Yeah, what can I expect from people around here? You should be very careful about who you reveal yourself to. If you speak with Hadron, the archaeologist, you may not want to tell him. He's a great man of faith, but he is old. Uh, believe in you will come slowly. Gunther Wilhelm was a brilliant man and open to new ideas. I believe he'll accept you immediately. Thank you, I'll remember that. A few more questions? Of course, honored one. I live to serve. Um... Who else should I speak to concerning Panari history? There are many scholars in the First Temple of Panari. The two most learned are Hadron, the church archaeologist, and Gunther Wilhelm, the church historian. Both are well-versed in Panari history and have detailed information concerning their specific disciplines. And where might I find him, Alexander? Each of them have offices just beyond the doors behind me. Uh, when we're finished speaking, I'll open the doors for you. I'll look into it. A few more questions? Of course, honored one. Live to serve. What can you tell me of the Panari church? What would you like to know? Uh, what do the Panari leave in, believe in? Panari and their belief are centered around the life and teaching of the Nazarene. Throughout his life, in his years and his passing, there have been much written about him and those who knew him, as well as learned men who studied his life. Uh, what can you tell me about Nazarene? What would you like to know about him? Well, who was he? Nazarene is a very powerful and wise elf who lived during the Age of Legends leader of the Elven Council. Nazarin was both the physical and spiritual leader of all lands of Arcanum. For a thousand years he ruled over the council and the land prospered and all was well. And what happened? The coming of Aranox heralded the, age of the end of the age of her Arcanum. 
from the disbanding of the Elven Council to the death of our beloved Nazarin. How did Nazarin die? Nazarin died after he uh, and the Council banished Aranox from the Ring of Brodgar. Nazarin was wounded mortally in the battle which preceded the banishment and died not long after. And where did he die? According to the Archon, Nazarin traveled the southernmost tip of the land, and there he laid himself to rest. That's where we are. This temple is built over his remains. Really, where might I find these remains? The remains of Nazarin are just below us, in the lower catacombs. There's a stairway through the doors behind me. It leads down to the burial chamber and the sarcophagus, which he is encased. Unfortunately, only church elders and pilgrims are allowed to see the remains. Um, yeah, but I'm the living one. <laughs> what would you like to know? Um... What are the teachings of Nazarin? Would you like to know about them? Are there scriptures you study? There are many writings we study, but the most important book of the Patari religion is the Akion. It is a collection of what are considered the most representative teachings of the Nazarin, as well as prophecies that were made in the early years following his death. Where might I find a copy of the Archeon? The Archeon? It's just over there, the large book on the pedestal. Feel free to peruse this page and gain what wisdom there is to be found. If you'd like to discuss anything you'll find confusing or unclear, I'd be happy to oblige you. Uh, thank you. A few more questions about the Nazarin. Uh, teachings... What's the essence of the Nazarin's teachings? Nazarin was an ardent believer in elven philosophy. Elves feel that everyone and everything has their rightful place in the world. Um, that is a reality that is formed through the combined experience of all forms of life. Good and evil rarely play a part in how elves view the world. Well, what might be considered evil? Evil, in the most basic terms, might be described as something which disallows the progress of the natural order. I suppose it's a gray area, but you might say evil is anything diametrically opposed to elven philosophies. To which I say, even those have their place. <laughs> it's that a single elven philosopher debates have spanned literal decades. You can see why. Elven and Dwarven philosophies are very different. Oh, do you know of Dwarven philosophy? I've discussed that length of the stone and the shape. Not many outlanders can speak these things. Tell me, my friend, what do you see as the major difference between the two? Um... <laughs> Both camps are misguided. Solidarity versus immaterial. An interesting point of view, but in my opinion, of course, a rather shallow one. Perhaps you should come with us and study for a time. <laughs> Find your opponent. Um, I'm sorry you think so. Some general question about the Nazarene. Teaching... I guess that's it. Let's see. Wait! Do you see that man? The one at the front of the temple? Yes, who's that? That's Alexander! First acolyte of the Panari Church. I never thought I'd actually lay eyes on him. What about him? The man's a living legend! Joaquin used to tell me stories about him. Not a nobler soul in all of Arcanum, it said. And he's a skilled warrior as well. Not the sort you want to tangle with. I see. Um... Before we call this a video... Okay, we can't actually read the Archeon. Er, the Archeon. So, when we come back, I guess the Panari Temple. Have a good one, folks.